can prove that they are smarter than a fifth grader. No. Mm, a lot of money. And this is my class, Cody! Contestant Kaylin Godfrey has got five thousand dollars. We're about to play for ten. You still have both your cheats left. You have your copy and your cheat. This next question is worth ten thousand dollars. You selected second grade physical education. Mackenzie said that was cool with her. Here is the ten thousand dollar question. Okay. In a standard baseball game. How many defensive players are on the field at any given time? In a standard baseball game, how many defensive players are on the field at any given time? Mackenzie has locked in her answer. Are you a baseball fan? Um, not, not so much. Not so much. I want to say. Let, let's do a this. Number. Let's. Let's try to name the positions on a baseball field. Okay. okay. I'll count them. You name them. Okay. <laughs> um. Pitcher, catcher, first, second, third, and then is there two outfielders or three? I'm gonna. You said pitcher, catcher, pitcher, first, second, second third. third, and then it's people in the outfield, I think. And people in the outfield. So I don't know how many. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna, because I'm not 100% sure, I'm gonna go ahead and use my peak. Okay. The question, in a standard baseball game, how many defensive players are on the field at any given time? Your classmate McKenzie said nine. How's that feel? Feels good. No. Um, you know what? She's in fifth grade. She's probably real smart. So I'm going to go ahead and say Nine. I want to see how the sorority sisters feel about that answer. I I kind of in my nine. head and I thought it was nine. Yeah. Then again, nine. I lost my first nine. Boy, that's a confidence builder. I know. Right there. <laughs> Nathan. I know you're a baseball fan. Name the positions for me. Let's count them out, Kaylin. Okay. Pitcher, catcher, first base, second base, third base, shortstop, right field, center field, left field. How many is that? Nine. He knows his baseball. <laughs> Nine's the right answer, and you got $10,000. Great job. Thank you. Yeah, we have a smart class in here. All right. Six subjects remain, three classmates to choose from. Pick one of them. Let's do Sierra. Sierra, come on up here. You like the blonde thing. Yeah, I, I like notice a lot of girls in the sorority are blonde. That's right. <laughs> you could be an alpha fee when you grow up. How about that? Yeah, all right. Six subjects were made on the board. Okay. We need to get this next one right, because if you had flunked out up to this point, you would have left with nothing. You get this one right, you're leaving with no less than $25,000, okay? We're trying to do. You had to help Kaylin with two subjects. Which ones would they be? I really like anatomy and uh, measurements. All right, I am going to go with um, third grade anatomy. Third grade anatomy. Do right. it. For $25,000, the third grade anatomy question is, it's a classroom club question. Yes. We love classroom club questions. <laughs> Kaylin, these questions. Come on, were sent in to us by actual viewers. In this case, it was Courtney from Canyon View Elementary. And because we used her question, Courtney's school is getting a computer lab courtesy of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? How about that? All right, let's see what Courtney has in store for us. For $25,000, the question is, true or false, the kidneys are part of the human digestive system. 
True or false, the kidneys are part of the human digestive system. Sierra's locked in her answer. You have your copy left, which means you would have to take the answer that she had written down. Okay. If you answer incorrectly, you're walking out of here with nothing. You answer correctly, we keep playing, and you've got at least $25,000. Okay, well, to be totally honest, I'm not 100% sure, and I really want to make it to $25,000. So I'm going to trust my fifth grade helper, and I am going to use my copy. If I had made you answer the question on your own, what would you have said? True or false, the kidneys are part of the human digestive system. True. If you had said true, <laughs> you would have been wrong. Oh, good. The answer is false. The kidneys filter blood. They have nothing to do with the digestive system. For $25,000, Sierra said, false, you got it. Fate you out. I know. But she got you 25000 Can she be an honorary sorority sister? Yes. Now? You come visit any time. <laughs> you're in. The good news is, you're leaving here with no less than $25,000 today. How about that? <laughs> the bad news is, your classmates can no longer help you because you have used your copy, your peak, and your save. So it's just you, Caleb. We are halfway to the million dollars. Five subjects remaining. Which one do you want? Uh, measurements. You, you want, Let's you want do third grade measurements. Third grade measurements, yeah. all right. <laughs> Caleb. I'm just working my way up. <laughs> I like your strategy. Start at the bottom, work to the top. The $50,000 question is going to be revealed when we come back. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Kaylin Godfrey, a sophomore at San Diego State That's University, right. has got $25,000. We're about to play for $50,000. You selected. Third grade measurements. measurements. Right. This question, there's no reason not to answer it because you right. got 25,000. Even if you miss it, you got 25,000. For $50,000, can we see the third grade question, please? How many cups are in five U.S. liquid quarts? How many cups are in five U.S. liquid quarts? All right. I'm glad this is the question. In one quart, there's four cups. I'm pretty positive of that. So five quarts would be five times four. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, quarts, one quart, four cups. It's 20, all right. I think I'm ready, okay. Um, how many cups are in five U.S. liquid quarts? My answer is 20 cups. Let's read the question again. How many cups are in five U.S. liquid quarts? A liquid quart has four cups in it, times five is 20. You got $50,000. Yeah! Oh! Oh! There it is. Four cups equal to four. Four times five is 20. That's mean. 
It's made. I just gave you fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> Now, four subjects remain between you and the million dollar question. How about that? It's up to you. And the cool thing is, you can see the question and still drop, drop out. out. You got okay. 50,000. That's two, um, fourth grade social studies. Fourth grade Let's social science. studies. Fourth right. grade social studies. Listen carefully. Do not hit the button too quickly. For $100,000, the fourth grade social studies question is, who was the very first U.S. Secretary of State? Who was the very first U.S. Secretary of State? Okay. Um... Do you know who the first president was? George Washington. Do you know who his Secretary of State was? John Adams? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I think I'm gonna have to say, I need to drop out of school. You're a smart young lady because sometimes it pays to know what you don't know. Right. The question was, who was the very first U.S. Secretary of State? Did you ever hear of a man named Thomas Jefferson? No. In fact, that's what four out of five of them said, and four out of five of them are absolutely right. It was Thomas Jefferson, but... You're still walking out of here with, with $50,000. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. One thing you need to do before you head back to San Diego State, remember what it is? There's the camera. Say it loud and say it proud because you got $50,000. All right, my name is Kaylin Gottfried, and although I may be a college student, I'm definitely not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Smarter than a fifth grader. Are you guys ready to meet your new classmate? Yeah! He is a 25-year-old retail clothing store manager who attended Low Elementary in Louisville, Kentucky. Welcome, Travis Crawford! What's up, what's up, back row, what's up? You guys make me look good, make me look good. Make me look good. Travis, how are you? What's Welcome up, to yeah? the show. Hey, thank you, thank you very much. Whew. That's pretty fancy footwork there, Travis. I'm thank impressed. You, thank you. Oh, wow. Now, let's talk about this glamour shot right here. <laughs> Are those the acid wash parachute pants you or? Uh, know it. Tight rolled at the bottom, early 90s style. Just you, perfect. You had it going on. And you're, you're an identical twin. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so <laughs> please tell me he was not dressed the same way. <laughs> oh, no. No. Oh. Look at this. Oh, wow. You guys, I mean. I, I try not to look like him. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to be genetics. We know it. What's your brother's name? Ryan. Ryan. Oh, win it for me. <laughs> look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, when you were attending Lowell Elementary, what kind of student were you? Uh, I was pretty good. What was your best subject? Math. Math. Math? Always has been, yeah. Worst Probably. subject? Uh, social studies. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, we got some people here to help you out today. These fifth graders are going to be taking yeah, the same test with you. Yeah, team. We're going to let you cheat off of them. There's some oh, good news. Pick one of them. Let's get started. Oh. Olivia. Olivia. Olivia, come on up here. There's a good positive vibe in the room I today. Feel. I like this. Do you know that we have yet to give away a million dollars? This could be the day today. You know, I think it... I think it might be. I think it might be. This could be the day. Now, if the test gets to be too difficult, you can take the money and drop out of school. But before you leave us, one little thing you have to promise me you'll do. 
Yes, sir. Like everyone that has stood here before you, you must look into the camera and say, I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Deal. And neither is my identical twin brother. Definitely not. Uh, hey! Definitely not. <laughs> Let's find out, is Travis Crevice smarter than a fifth grader? All right, I know you said math was your best subject. That's a third grade question. What about you, Olivia? Which one would you pick for him? Okay. Everything except math, okay? Um, so, I think... <laughs> I think I would go with second grade grammar. Second grade grammar, all right. For $1,000, here is the second grade grammar question. True or false, a sentence cannot contain both a past tense and a future tense verb. True or false, a sentence cannot contain both a past tense and a future tense verb. Olivia has locked Locked in her answer. She's ready for it. You know what? (laughs) If I have to use a a cheat on this, I'd want to punch myself. Well, it's it's 50-50. I mean, if you think you know the answer, there's a a good chance she could save you. Um... All right, Jeff, all right. True or false, a sentence cannot contain both a past tense and a future tense verb. I'm gonna log in false. Okay. That's true, isn't it? I don't know. Now, when you went to lock in, I noticed you have a rubber band around your wrist. What is that for? This is my good luck charm. Ever since I was a child, uh, at 13, like we played basketball, and when you screw up, the coach would just snap it. And just snap so, it if you did something wrong. Right. I'm about to snap it, Jeff. Pull it back. <laughs> Don't let it go. You're right. Yeah. A sentence can contain both. Yes. Example on the board, Travis. I went to the store last week, but I will go to a different store next week. Nothing to it. Hey, yeah, what a warm up. Nothing to it. All right, nine subjects remain. Let's turn a thousand into two thousand. Pick another one. I think I'm going to go with. I'm really good with math. I know you don't love math. I'm gonna go with third grade math. Third grade math, all right. All right. For $2,000, the third grade math question is, it's a classroom club question. We love these. This means one of our viewers, William from Heritage Academy, sent us in this question and we loved it so much we decided to put it on the show and because you did that, William, Heritage Academy is getting a computer lab, courtesy of our yes, yes. 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 William looks like a cool guy, doesn't he? William looks like, I know you're gonna get it wrong. <laughs> Let's see what William had for us. For $2,000, here's the question. Olivia has three marbles. Sierra has 50 times as many marbles as Olivia. Cody has five times as many marbles as Sierra. How many marbles does Cody have? Wow, so let me talk this out. (laughs) Olivia has three marbles. Sierra has 50 times as many marbles as Olivia. Cody has five times as many marbles as Sierra. How many marbles does Cody have? Olivia has locked in her answer. You said math was your best subject. Talk this one out. All right, so if Olivia has three marbles and then Sierra has 50 times, that would be 50 times three. So I feel like that pulls this up to 150 marbles. Then you've got my man Cody who has five times as many marbles as Sierra. So the way I see it, that if Sierra has 150, then that must be five times 150. So if I count that out, that's 150, 300. 
450, 600, I come up with 750 marbles. That's the way I do my math there. Five times 150. So I'm gonna log on 750 marbles. <laughs> Let's see what the rest of your class said. That's my team. Guess what? Everybody's right. You got $2,000. Oh, there it is. Three times 50 times five is 750. All right. We have $2,000. Your classmates can only help you a couple of questions at a time, so you need to pick another one. Sierra. Sierra, come on up here. Eight subjects up there. Which one do you want? I feel like I want to go with second grade spelling. Second grade spelling, all right. The second grade spelling question worth $5,000 will be revealed when we come back. Travis is in big trouble. You're scared. And he needs help. We need it desperately. Will brotherly love bail out this baffled twin? Come on, trucking. Or will he flunk out? Your brother looks humiliated right now. Bringing Travis to his knees. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Don't miss it next on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? than a fifth grader. Our contestant, Travis Prophet from Louisville, Kentucky, has $2,000. We're about to play for five. Now, you selected second grade spelling for your $5,000 question. Take a look at the board for $5,000. Here it is. What word in the following sentence comes first alphabetically? An antelope? and an ant already ate all the apples. What word in the following sentence comes first alphabetically? An antelope and an ant already ate all the apples. Sierra has locked in her answer with authority. That sounded confident to me. Okay, so uh, obviously alphabetically A is the first letter in the alphabet. Um, so you're looking at the second letters. On the top, they all have N, second, and antelope, and, and, ant. So, and then we've got already, and all, and apples on the bottom. So the L is the second letter in the next two, so that would come before the N's on top. Uh, already ate all the apples. So, obviously L becomes for the T and eight, A becomes for T and the, and L becomes for the P and apples. So uh, we're looking at already, and all, and so A-L-A-L, -L, then A-L-R, and A-L-L, -L, I think L comes for R if I do my alphabet again. So. I'm getting dizzy, Travis, I gotta sit down. A, 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 A. <laughs> so I think I'm going to select the word all and log in all. <laughs> Seven subjects before the million dollar question. The next one is worth $10,000. You have both first grade questions. You've got a third, two fourth, and two fifth. Which one would you like? So I'm gonna go with third grade animal science. Third grade animal science, all right. Travis, for $10,000, the third grade animal science question is, in terms of average weight, 
What is the largest species of snake in the world? In terms of average weight, what is the largest species of snake in the world? Sierra has locked in. Sierra does not mess around no. at all. She's not playing. That's my teammate. That's my partner. That is my partner. Uh, well, I mean, there's a really famous horror movie called Anaconda, and that thing was huge. I know the python and like boa constrictors are all pretty big, but I mean, I, so far as I know, uh, worldwide, an anaconda is the biggest snake there ever was. So, well, um, and you still have your save left. You still got your peak. You still got your copy. I think I'm gonna trust that she'll save me, and I'm going to lock in anaconda. <laughs> I love that we're basing answering questions on a movie that starred Jennifer Lopez and Ice Cube. <laughs> <laughs> it's Anaconda, you got $10,000. Thank you, thank you. Oh. Good job. You guys are awesome, make it look good. You guys are the best. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, thank you. Travis. Yes, sir. Up until this point, if you had flunked out of this class, you would have left with nothing. You get this next question right, you're walking out of here with at least $25,000 yeah. We need this next question. We need it desperately. You have three classmates left. Pick one of them. I'm gonna go with the boy this time. I'm gonna go with Nathan. Nathan, come on up here. Nathan's my man. Six subjects left. Which one would you like, Travis? I think, are you good at English? Yeah. I'm gonna have to go first grade English, not right, those first, first grade, grade English. For $25,000, Travis, here is the first grade question. True or false? The plural form of the word roof is roofs. True or false? The plural form of the word roof is roofs. Nathan has slapped in his answer. Uh, Santa lands on a lot of roofs on Christmas Eve night. I don't think he lands on a lot of roof or a lot of roofus. So, and I think Nathan could save me. So I'm going to go with, I'm gonna lock in True. Your brother looks humiliated right now. No. And I know what your fear is, Ryan. You're going to be walking around tomorrow and somebody's going to go, you were the guy that said roofs. You were right when you said that the plural form was not Rufus's. But it's not roofs either. It's roofs. It's roofs. R-O-O-F-S. Nathan, don't make that face. You're scaring me to death. If this nine-year-old said false, you have $25,000. If Nathan said true, you have zero. Travis. That's a pretty big difference. Take a look at the board. Your friend Nathan said, Vault, you got $25,000. Yes. 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 Nathan. Nathan. You're not the smarter twin anymore. You are off the hook. Look, look at Ryan. Yeah, look. You're off the hook. Nathan, you're my boy. For now. Oh. We are going to be playing for $50,000 yeah. right after this. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Travis Profit, has got $25,000. Yeah. How about that?
You're leaving here with no less than 25 grand today. God. Travis, you are halfway to the million dollar question right now. We have five subjects on the board, two fifth grade, two fourth grade, and still have a first grade question left. Which one would you like? I'll go with fourth grade anatomy. Fourth grade anatomy. <laughs> this is a cool question. No reason not to go for it, because even if you miss it, you're not giving any money back, OK? Yeah. For $50,000, the fourth grade anatomy question is this. The pituitary gland is part of what system in the human body? Circulatory, endocrine, or digestive? The pituitary gland is part of what system in the human body? The circulatory, the endocrine, or the digestive? Nathan's locked in. What do we know about the pituitary gland? Uh, I, I want to say that it's responsible for uh, something to do with sweat. So I know endocrine is your gland. Circulatory, A, flows blood through your body. Digestive, well, I think we all know what that does. Um, my gut tells me endocrine. I really want to lean towards endocrine. Wow. $50,000 is a lot of money. Um, I think... Just to be safe, I'm going to lock in a peak and see what compare answers. Okay. If, if you had not had a peak and you had to answer this yourself, what would you have said? I would have definitely said endocrine. Something you would have said endocrine. endocrine. All right, let's see what this fifth grade guy said. Nathan said, be endocrine. You and me. Best friends. Best friends ever yeah. since that last question. <laughs> um, I, I think that, that gonna... makes me feel pretty confident. I think I'm going to, I can't lose on the question anyway. I got to lock in an answer. He says it, I says it. I think I'm going to lock in endocrine. <laughs> he says it, I says it. We all says it. Endocrine, you got $50,000. Good job, Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. Woo. Uh, Travis, there's only four questions before the million dollar question. You still have a first grade question left on the board. We don't usually see them this deep into the game. You have two classmates left. Pick one of them. I got a gut feeling. I'm going to go with the boy again. I got to go with my man, Cody. Cody, Cody. come on up here. <laughs> Four questions. Cody, which one would you like to tackle for the $100,000 question? Music. Music. I think I'm going to start, I have to go with that first grade question to get it out of the way. It's first grade. All right, first grade music. Do not hit the button too quickly because you can see the question and still walk away. You have $50,000 right now. You get this one right, you have $100,000. The first grade music question worth $100,000 is this. What is the name of the following musical instrument? What is the name of the following musical instrument? Cody has locked in his answer. Um, you're locked in. I that that looks a lot like a tuba to me. Fifty thousand dollars is so much money for me. I think I'm at the drop down. To, oh, give me a second. The drop down to fifty thousand to twenty. I keep twenty five no matter you what. You get twenty five no matter what. So is it worth guessing that that's a tuba to bump fifty up to hundred in risk of going down to twenty five? 
What would you do with $100,000? With $100,000, I think I would definitely have to invest in a new car at this point. Um, a redneck truck, probably, most likely. Lifted? Lifted. That's what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> That's not even might be a redneck. That's you're in the club <laughs> right now. Yeah. That sounds so good. You got me hyped on the, red, on the redneck lifted truck. I'm going to lock in tuba. It's kind of nerve-wracking when it gets up to $100,000, doesn't it? Yes, sir. And you know what's weird? There's two of you, and there's a tuba on the board. You got $100,000. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Travis, you got $100,000. Yes. yes. Oh. Thank you for a ride in your truck. How about that? Woo. Wow. Hold me up, yeah. Hold me up. There are only three subjects remaining. This next question is worth $175,000. History! History! It's to fifth grade U.S. history. Fifth grade U.S. history. Now remember, you can see the question and still walk away, okay? Okay, okay. Okay. Did you ever dream of playing for $175,000? Not in my wildest dreams. That's well, you're going to do it when we come back. <laughs> Don't go away, y'all. <laughs> Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Travis Private, is about to play for $175,000. All right, Travis. The fifth grade U.S. history question is this. What U.S. Revolutionary War hero is credited with saying, I have not yet begun to fight? What U.S. Revolutionary War hero is credited with saying, I have not yet begun to fight? Cody has locked in his answer. Do not hit that button yet. What are you thinking? I, I, to be honest in that, I, I would be, it would almost be a blind guess. And I, I know I have a copy, a copy left. And, and Cody's a smart dude. Well, let's talk about this. If you miss it, you're giving back $75,000 get it right, you're adding $75,000. That's a $150,000 swing. I'm not gonna lie to you, Jeff, I'm a, I'm a simple man. Uh, that's more money than most people I know ever would make in a while. So I'm gonna lock in dropping out of school. What U.S. Revolutionary War hero is credited with saying, I have not yet begun to fight? Washington. On three, yell it out together. One, two, three. John, John Paul Jones! John Paul Jones is exactly right. But you're walking out of here with $100,000, yeah, so Travis. Great. That is a great day, yeah. $100,000. Business you and I have left, all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I don't think you're going to have any problems saying this today. No. There's the camera. Let them hear it. Uh, I may be a Georgia Bulldog and graduated pre-med, but I'm definitely not smarter than a fifth Woo! grader. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Foxworthy, and we're giving grown-ups the chance to win $1 million if they can prove that they are smarter than a fifth grader. Let's meet our class, Cody!
classmates. She is a 28-year-old youth group director and a graduate student. She attended Lamita Elementary. Welcome, Megan Miles. There's a picture of Megan in the fifth grade. What kind of student were you? Um, I was a teacher's pet. I was a big nerd. What are you majoring in in grad school? I am studying neuroscience. Nerd, like brain. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Going for your PhD, I understand. Yes, I am. You are smart. That's what they tell me. Speaking of brains, we've got a few of them in our classroom. Yeah. These guys are going to be taking the same test you're taking, and we're going to let you cheat off of them. So pick one of them Thank and let's you guys. get started. Thank you, guys. Hi. I think I'm going to start with Cody. Cody, come on up here. <laughs> How about that? A PhD in neuroscience. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, let me tell you how this is going to work. Okay. On the board, you're going to see 10 subjects. Okay. Your first correct answer is going to be worth $1,000. Your 10th okay. correct answer is worth $500,000. <laughs> Megan, imagine you've aced a test or two, right? A few, yeah. You ace this one. We're going to give you one more question that will be worth $1 million. <laughs> And Megan, we have yet to give away the million dollars on the show. I would love to see you walk out of here with it tonight, okay? <laughs> now, if at any point you decide this elementary school test is too difficult, you can drop out and take the money that you want and leave us. But before you do, there's one thing you have to promise me, and that is you will look into that camera right there and tell millions and millions of people, I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Okay. We have a deal? We have a deal. All right. Let's find out, is Megan Miles smarter than a fifth grader? Woo! All right, when you were in elementary school, what were your best subjects? Math was Math. my best subject. That's in the second grade. Cody, what would you say your best subject is? Math. 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 It's your choice. Pick one right. and let's go for $1,000. I think I'll go with math. math. Second grade math. All right. For $1,000, the second grade math question is, what number is exactly halfway between one and seven on a number line? What number is exactly halfway between one and seven on a number line? Your classmate Cody has locked in his answer. You have a smile. All right. So exactly between one and seven. So we've got one, two, three, seven, six, five. That only leaves four. So I'm going to lock in four. <laughs> got to be the easiest thousand dollars you ever made in your life. You're exactly right. There it is. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Thank you. Five, six, seven. All right. Nothing to it. Woo, that Nothing was all right. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's double it. Let, let pick another okay. subject. Let's turn it into $2,000. Let's go animal science. Animal science. Animal science. You like animals? Animal science. All right. For $2,000, Megan, here is the first grade question. By definition, the term bovine refers to which of the following animals? Cow, pig, or dog? By definition, the term bovine refers to which of the following animals? Cow, pig, or dog? Classmate Cody has locked in his answer. All right, I am pretty sure that bovine is cow. So I am going to lock in cow. <laughs> I am pretty sure you have $2,000. Cody could have saved you 
the two. Cody had Cal as well. Good job, Cody. All right, eight subjects remain. You've got four classmates to choose from. Pick another one. Pick me! Pick me! Pick me! I think we pick Mackenzie. Mackenzie! Now, Megan, why don't you introduce Mackenzie and the rest of us to your family? I have my parents and my brother. Hey, Mom, Dad, brother, how are you? Now, wh what does your dad do? My dad is an Episcopal priest. A priest? Oh, wow, okay, yeah. good. So we've got some help here today, then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you must be very proud of your daughter here. Very proud. You're doing great. You've Thanks. got your, all your cheats left. You've got good. your save. You've got $2,000. You've got Mackenzie up here. That's right. Mackenzie, if you had to help her, what would you help her with? Um, definitely music, um, and world geography, and social studies. Okay, a first grade, second grade, and a fourth grade question. It's your choice, though. No science yet. Let's go geography, first grade. First grade, world geography. First grade. For $5,000. The first grade world geography question is this. More than 95% of which continent is covered by an ice sheet? More than 95% of which continent is covered by an ice sheet? Mackenzie has locked in her answer. What do we know about ice sheets? Um, that they're frozen, so <laughs> they definitely need to be in very cold temperatures. Um, well, the only continent that I can think of that is that covered by ice has got to be Antarctica. So I'm going to lock in Antarctica. Olivia, what continent did you say is 95% covered by an ice sheet? I said Antarctica. Of course you did. That's the right answer. You got $5,000. Mackenzie had Antarctica as well. All right, seven subjects remain. We're playing for $10,000. Pick another one. Social studies! Social studies! Social studies. Social studies. Social studies. The second grade social studies question worth $10,000 is gonna be revealed when we come back. <laughs> A fifth grader. Our contestant, Megan Miles, is studying for her PhD in neuroscience. Yes. All right. Right before we went to break, you selected second grade social studies for the $10,000 question. You ready to see it? Yes, I am. For $10,000, the question is this. What U.S. city is known as the city of brotherly love? What U.S. city is known as the city of brotherly love? Mackenzie has locked in her answer. Have you traveled much? I have. Um, I hesitate to use a cheat on this because it's early, but I really want to get to that $25,000 level. So, even though I think it's Philadelphia, I'm going to lock in a peak. You want a peak? Yes. All right. The question, what U.S. city is known as the city of brotherly love, and I do love this, the fact that the woman going for her PhD in neuroscience wants to peek at a 10-year-old's paper. I, I, do, I do love that. It happens. Your classmate, Mackenzie, said she thought it was Philadelphia. Okay. All right. Well, I'm pretty sure it's Philadelphia, so I am going to go with you, Mackenzie, and lock in Philadelphia. <laughs> What U.S. city is known as the city of brotherly love? I think smart girls are so hot. You've got $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Way to go, Mac. Thank you. All right. Three classmates yet to choose from. All right, guys. I'm going to go with Olivia. Olivia. All right, how you feeling? 
Good. Let's give away a million dollars tonight. Yeah. We've not done that. Now, is, is this true because it says on the card, you said physical education was your least favorite subject, but then it says you play on the flag football team, the neuroscience flag football team. That's right, intramural flag football. <laughs> I bet you have to stop the game a lot to like for people to pick their glasses up and their <laughs> calculators and that kind of stuff. All right, two third grade, two fourth grade, two fifth grade questions. Pick your poison. Spelling. Spelling. All right. And Megan, I really want you to get this one because you get this one. The worst thing that can happen today is you're walking out of here with $25,000. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Third grade spelling question worth $25,000 is... It's a classroom club question. Okay. Okay. You're gonna like this. That means this was sent in by an actual viewer, Hayden from Walter C. Black Elementary School. We have some smart kids that watch this show. Great. And when they send us a question and we choose to use it on the show, we send their school a computer lab. How about oh, that? Oh, that's great. So congratulations, Hayden. Walter C. Black Elementary is getting a computer lab. All right, let's see what Hayden has in store for us. The $25,000 question is this. How many times does the letter A appear in the following word? Abracadabra. How many times does the letter A appear in the word abracadabra? Olivia has locked in her answer. All right, abracadabra. Abracadabra. I'm pretty sure Abracadabra has five A's, so I'm gonna lock in five. <laughs> Megan, how many times in your life have you had to spell Abracadabra? Uh, none that I remember. <laughs> If you did win 25,000, what would you do with it? I would probably go on an African safari. Yeah, Africa is beautiful. I have been to Africa, love Africa. You said the letter A appears five times in the word. Take a look at the board and we will show how to spell abracadabra. A B R A C A D A B R A five times. You have twenty five thousand dollars, yeah. Megan. <laughs> Megan, we are halfway to the million dollar question. <laughs> you still have your copy. You still have your save. That's right. No reason not to answer the $50,000 question, because even if you miss it, you go home with 25. Now, you did tell me you came for a million dollars. I did. We have never given away a million dollars. Boy, wouldn't it be cool if tonight was the night? Pick another subject, and let's play for 50,000. All right, let's go for astronomy. 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 All right. Listen carefully, the $50,000 question is, true or false, an object's mass is different on the moon than it is on Earth. True or false, an object's mass is different on the moon than it is on Earth. Olivia has locked in her answer. An object's mass. Now you study brains. I do. Okay. Does mass come into play when you're studying the brain? Occasionally. Depends on who the person is, That's right? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know that you weigh less on the moon, but I don't think that your mass actually changes. So I'm going to say false. <laughs> still have your save left. I Let's do. see. 
if this fifth grader can save you. Take a look at the board. Olivia said false. Okay. An object's weight is different on the moon and an object's mass is the same on the moon. The answer is false. You got $50,000. See how the folks are doing. Check in over there. Go, Megan! <laughs> Mom's excited. Dad's a little quietly nervous here. Yes. Yes. She's doing great. Yeah. She's still got her copy left. She's still got her save left. We are about to play for $100,000. Yes! $100,000! Would you like to ask Sierra what she might like to help you with? What are your best subjects, Sierra? What's left on the board? Well, I really like music, and world history is good too, so okay. I think you should go with those. All right. I'm gonna go with music. 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 Now, you were in the marching band, right? Yes. What? Yes. <laughs> so, so you were a nerd and in the band. That's oh, that's right. awesome. The fourth grade music question worth $100,000 will be revealed when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Megan Miles, has got $50,000. We're about to play for $100,000. You selected fourth grade music. For $100,000, the question is this. Which of the following terms refers to the relative speed of a piece of music? Staccato, mezzo, or tempo? Which of the following terms refers to the relative speed of a piece of music? Staccato, mezzo, or tempo? Your classmate Sierra has locked in her answer. Now, I actually majored in music in undergrad, so if I get this wrong, I think my teachers will kill me. Um, but the term that refers to the relative speed of a piece of music is the tempo. Okay, I will tell you this. Your classmate, Sierra, has the exact same answer as the rest of the class. Great minds think alike. Great minds think alike. <laughs> you said that the answer was tempo. Let's see what the class said. The class said, tempo, you're all right, and you got $100,000. <laughs> Feeling good. I feel great. <laughs> what are you going to do with $100,000? Well, gosh, well, I'm definitely going on that safari. Right. Yeah. yeah. What about Dad's church? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about maybe a little something in the well, offering plate. I didn't I could know. donate. <laughs> I'll do that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to well, get a little thanks. <laughs> All right, we don't get this far very often. There are three subjects between this and the million dollar question. You've got your copy left. You've got your save left. You're doing great. What subject would you like? She said world history is her subject, so world history. Fourth grade world history. Okay. And at this point in the game, you can see the question and still drop out. $100,000 yep. is a lot of money. It's great. <laughs> but I want to give away a million tonight, okay? okay? So we got to get past this question. Okay. 
The $175,000 question is, who became the first chairman of the People's Republic of China in 1949? Who became the first chairman of the People's Republic of China in 1949? Classmate Sierra has locked in her answer. Oh, wow. So, I'm not actually sure if I know the answer to this one. You're um, kidding me. I'm going back and forth in my head with several people. Talk it out. Well, the one who's sticking in my head is Mao. But I'm afraid that I might be wrong. And if I'm wrong, I know you could save me. Oh, gosh. You know what? I'm here to have fun. I am going to go with Mao. <laughs> First instinct. <laughs> You're a little bit of a gambler, too, aren't oh, you? Oh, today I am, apparently. <laughs> Not normally? No. No, I'm a play it safe kind of girl. <laughs> <laughs> you said you were going to take a chance because this was her subject and she could save you. Yep. Let's see if that's a possibility. Can Sierra save you if you're wrong? Sierra said, Mal. <laughs> Looks Mayo, good to me. W. <laughs> it's not a spelling question. You have the same answer. So she can't save you. Who became the first chairman of the People's Republic of China in 1949? Megan, the correct answer is Mao. You got $175,000. <laughs> down to your last classmate. All right, Nathan. We're going to do this. You're in such great shape. You've got $175,000 in your pocket right now. You've got your copy left. You've got your save left. We are two questions away from the million dollar question. All right. America, it looks like we might have our first millionaire tonight. We're going to be playing for $300,000 right after this. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Megan Miles, is doing great. She has $175,000. She has her copy left. She has her save left. She's got Nathan at the podium with her. Nathan. Science. You like science. Without hesitation, he said science. History is OK, but I love science. science. You, are, you are majoring in neuroscience. You can still see the question and drop out. I know. I'm really good at US history. So I know, I know you all want me to go for science, but I think I'm actually going to go with U.S. history because I'm really good at it. So U.S. history. OK. U.S. history. U.S. history. U.S. history. Your family's doing thumbs up. They okay. like that. Listen carefully. The fifth grade U.S. history question worth $300,000 is, during what war did British troops set the White House on fire? During. <laughs> the only person that's happy that the White House got set on fire. During what war did British troops set the White House on fire? Your classmate Nathan has locked in his answer. So when I was younger, I really loved the First Ladies, and I really loved Dolly Madison specifically because 
She saved portraits from the White House when it was set on fire by British troops in the War of 1812. I liked her too, but because she makes great cupcakes. <laughs> Megan, I don't know how to tell you this because you were so confident. You're right, you got $300,000. Megan. All right. We're about to play for half a million dollars. I don't even have to ask you what subject. This is rare air on this show. Woo. We are down to the last question before the million dollar question. Don't answer too quickly. Okay. For $500,000, the fifth grade science question is this. At room temperature, approximately 70 degrees Fahrenheit, two elements on the periodic table exist in a liquid state. Bromine is one of them. What is the other? At room temperature, approximately 70 degrees Fahrenheit, Two elements on the periodic table exist in a liquid state. Bromine is one of them. What is the other? Nathan has locked in his answer. See, this is why I was afraid of the science questions. Mercury is what we use in thermometers. Mercury would not work in thermometers if it froze or if it wasn't in a liquid state. I don't particularly want to walk away with 25 grand when I have 300 already. Oh wow. This is very hard. Okay, let's talk about where we're at. You've got, you've got 300,000 right now. Yes, I do. A lot of people talk about early in the game how they want to save their cheats, and somehow it just never seems to work out that way. You have managed to do that. You still have your copy left. Right. You still have your save left. And Nathan said that science... He did say science was his favorite it's his subject. his favorite subject. Room temperature approximately 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Two elements on the periodic table exist in a liquid state. Bromine is one of them. What is the other? That is the half million dollar question. Oh goodness. Well, at the risk of being the laughing stock of my PhD program, Mercury. Answer to the question is coming up right after this. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Megan Miles, has $300,000. The $500,000 question it's at room temperature, approximately 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Two elements on the periodic table exist in a liquid state. Bromine is one of them. What is the other? You elected to answer the question. You said? Mercury. Huh. You're going for your PhD in neuroscience. Yes, I am. You both have the same answer. He cannot save you. 
you and Nathan think alike, but he does not have half a million dollars. You, you've got to be proud of her. She is so smart. Yes, she is. So smart. Because of them. Who does she get her brains from? <laughs> <laughs> they both say the other one. You know your flag football teammates are all sitting at home right now, like. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Megan. This is the million dollar question. Go to the million! Knowing you were going to be on the show, you had to play this out in your mind a little bit. If you got to this point, what you might do. I did. <laughs> and what would that have been? I said that there were very few categories that I would actually go for the million with. Because, like I said, I don't like to gamble. So music is a guarantee. If you put music up there, I will go for the question. If you put... Well, the questions are picked at random and they're already locked in before the game begins. I have no idea what the subject is gonna be. The rules change here just a little bit. You still had your copy, you still had your save. Now they can do you no good. Because your classmates cannot help you on the million dollar question. Once you see the question, you have to answer it. If you answer it correctly, you walk out of here with a million dollars and you do not have to say the magic words. You answer it incorrectly, you drop down to 25,000. Would you like to see the subject? Okay. All right, ready? I'm ready. Deep breath. The subject of the million dollar question is this. Oh. U.S. history. <laughs> you just said a while ago you liked U.S. history. You think I should go for it? You call it. You call it. I'm good at U.S. history. History is one of my best subjects. So, I'm here to have fun, so let's go for it. Really? Yeah. Let's go for it. I am good at that subject. We're going to be playing for a million dollars when we come back. but we are about to play for one million dollars. <laughs> now you said before the categories came up that if the subject was music, without a doubt, you would go for it. Absolutely. And it was U.S. history. And you said earlier in the game that that was one of your favorite subjects. I'm good at U.S. history. Are you a million dollars good at it? Hopefully so. <laughs> Because if you are, we're going to be making television history tonight. Come on, guys. How you doing, Mom and Dad? Yes! Go! Here we go, Megan. The U.S. history question worth one million dollars is... What American pilot was the first person to exceed the speed of sound in an airplane? What American pilot was the first person to exceed the speed of sound in an airplane? 
Well, I am really good at US history, but you may have picked the only question I can't answer. Let me think about this. So, Lindbergh was famous for being the first to cross the, uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Earhart was the first woman to do so. Oh, God. Take your time. You know, it's funny, because my favorite Smithsonian Museum is the um, Air and Space Museum. I love that one, too. That and the Natural History Museum. Have you been through the Air and Space Museum? Yeah? Yeah, many times. I would imagine this person is in there. This person is in there. But you know what? I don't remember who it is. Let's talk it out. Oh. All right. Broke the sound barrier. Who broke the sound barrier? There's good old Howard Hughes. Who has the spruce goose? Broke the speed of sound. Question, what American pilot was the first person to exceed the speed of sound in an airplane? I'm thinking you would have seen this somewhere. Somebody probably has made a big deal about it. Many people have made big deals about it. <laughs> oh. This is one of those questions I really need to know the answer to. <laughs> Especially right now. <laughs> I know, because I just have this mental image of fifth graders all across the country screaming the answer at the I TV know. right now. <laughs> Howard Hughes. I mean, you did say 25,000 is still a good day, and it is. That's a great day at work. 25,000 is a great day. But there's no reason right. not to guess. Lindbergh Hughes. I'm going to say Howard Hughes. Mom and Dad, what do you think? I have not a clue. You don't have a clue? I know. Dad knows. Who was the first American pilot to exceed the speed of sound in an airplane? Yeager. Chuck Yeager? Chuck Yeager is exactly right. It is Chuck Yeager. I'm so sorry, Megan. That's all right. I... That is all right. Such a beautiful mind. Thank you. And you have a standing ovation Thank in the you. room. Twenty-five grand is a good day. That's a good day a for good a college day. grad student. That's right. Megan, I, I hate to even make you do this, but it's kind of a tradition on here. One last piece of business. You have been delightful. We have loved having you here. Thank you. There's the camera. My name is Megan Miles, and I may be studying for my PhD in neuroscience, and I may have had the guts to go for the million dollar question, but I am not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.